to Vidar's evolving exploration of grief is in its random storytelling. Every in-game night, a random one of the town's 24 NPCs is killed off, and their death and their works during their lifetime will have a lasting impact on the remaining villagers. In response, the still living will change their needs and wants, their habits, and their lives. For example, Edel is a cowardly soldier, the last remaining member of the city guard. At the start of the game, he's tilting at windmills, asking you to run errands that have nothing to do with the threat to Vidar, all under the guise of city safety. If you help him, and if the blacksmith is still alive, he'll become emboldened to step up and defend the town. Without the blacksmith, however, that empowerment turns to hostility. Edel will lash out violently against those who don't look like him or believe in the same gods. And, if at any point Edel's old hero dies, he'll make his way to the bar to drink away his sorrows. Rather than helping a coward find his backbone, he'll be helping a depressed child find his footing. Every life and death in Vidar has meaning, and that means every playthrough will tell a new story, depending on who lives and who dies. Conan Exiles is an open-world survival game set in the harsh world of Conan the Barbarian. When we say dominate, we're really talking about the aspects of the game where players will fight against both NPCs and they'll be of course fighting with other players and player-built cities in order to control the landscape. In Conan Exiles, everything is out there to get you. You have animals and predators, and you have ancient demonic creatures, uh, but the most dangerous enemy is other exiles. In Conan Exiles, we have an action combat system. You can dual wield weapons, you can use two-handed weapons. With a sword and a shield, you'll be able to block your enemies and force them backwards. Then there's weapons like the throwing axe, the versatile weapons, which you can use to swing from your offhand, but also throw at a fleeing enemy. Because this is the world of Conan, of course we've ratcheted the brutality up to 11, and you'll be able to deal fearsome blows to your enemies, chopping off limbs, heads, shearing them in half with a greatsword. The rules are NPCs that you capture in the world. You drag them back to your base and you break them on the Wheel of Pain so that they become your willing servants. Different thralls will be better at different things. So for example, you're going to want to find yourself a Shemite archer, one of the best archers in the world. And for example, if you manage to get lucky and find yourself a legendary named thrall in the world, then you'll be able to have a hero back at your base defending it. When you build a giant castle or a keep, people are going to see it in the landscape and they're going to want to take it from you. Uh, players should always be thinking on what is a good strategic location for building their bases. 
With the building system in Conan Exiles, we allow players to build into the side of cliff faces, up mountains. You want watchtowers and walls to place archers at. Elevation is also very, very important, and it might add a layer of protection against enemy archers or against their avatars. An avatar is the ultimate force of destruction in a PvP siege. If you are under attack by an avatar, you need to find the summoner and kill them. We've made players who summon avatars uniquely vulnerable during the summoning period, which means that they'll be visible from almost anywhere on the map. The, the pinnacle of gameplay in Conan Exiles is the moment when you take control of the avatar of the god for the first time, one of these massive titanic creatures, and you stomp around the landscape. You smite your foes with righteous fury. more excited about being in Kalpan than going on the trip. I mean, I was 13. All those people trading goods from all over the world. Handsome young warriors. Mm. Thinking back, I believe people must have known something was unusual with us. Maybe it was of a crew. They were a hardened band, used to the sea and to war. Most of them had made a name for themselves, and I could see the townsmen thread carefully around them. Me, though, I was just with my father, the captain. I had no worries. It was as clear a day as any when we set sail. You could not imagine a more perfect summer. We had a right wind, no clouds, it was like the boat sailing the ship. 
it was like this for days, and even the hardiest of the warriors smiled from time to time. No one had ever seen a storm come that quickly. We knew it couldn't be natural. One minute it was perfect summer, the next the waves were tall as trees. The sail was torn off the mast, and people were blown out to sea. Someone shouted that he saw a monster down there. One of my father's men grabbed me and pulled me under the boats to keep me safe. Moments later, he was gone too. I hit my head and all went dark. I woke when the cold water swallowed me. The rest is shrouded in a mist. I can't tell what was real and what was a dream. I don't know. Then I woke up on the beach. Oh! <laughs>